Now, let's move on, because this morning, as we do every Thursday morning, we look at the latest business and management books. And Alan Jordan, sales director of BookBuzz, is with me in studio. Morning, Alan. Morning, Ian. If you're a fan of Black Swan, Nudge and The Tipping Point, then you will love this book. But I think it's a bit heavier than what we normally are used to. Yeah, it is a little bit, but you know what? It's it's worth a read. I'll tell you why. Uh, and the title is um, Think Fast and Slow by the Nobel Prize winner Daniel Kahneman. That's right, yeah. And the title of the book comes from Kahneman's discussion of two simple models of how people think. And he refers to them as kind of System 1 and System 2. So System 1 is it corresponds to fast intuitive it's emotional it's almost automatic so it's a bit like um you know you're identifying a voice sound of an, uh, a noise um doing simple math like uh, two and two and then system two is where our thinking is more slow going and requires more intellectual effort uh, of course to nobody's surprise um we're more likely to rely on system one thinking because it saves us effort even though it can lead to flawed thinking now most of the times these two systems take care of our survival as humans, but on decision making, uh, gambling, etc., they're dead wrong quite often, and that's the challenge in this book. He's a behavioural economist, and he measures, I suppose, how we kind of re- re- respond to, to um, our events around us. I mean, system one is what most of us would use, in which we're, we're intuitive, we think very quickly, and act upon our impulses. Yeah, and this is this is the problem. You know what? I, I really enjoy the read because it it makes you question yourself. But the uh, the thing about it is, though, even though you become more aware of your biases, it doesn't mean that you can stop them happening. It just means you're aware of what you're going to do. But uh, the book would be beneficial for anybody involved in people management because it is about behavior. And if you look at uh, companies and the way they try to deal with staff, when you want for improvement, you're looking for a change of behavior. One of the interesting things, particularly when you're going to be dealing with, uh, as, you, as you do here on the show uh, most days, you talk about bankers and bonuses, uh, he has a substantive discourse on how money has caused people to collaborate less. In actual fact, he would argue it makes them more independent of one another and displaces the social value of collaboration. This is how people interact. The other side also he would cover praise or punishment are generally irrelevant for professionals because what they tend to do is do the best that they can and then their argument would be, well, this is the way it is. You know, that's, that's the way it is. And it's all about behaviour. So it's quite fascinating from that point of view. Does he say the system too in which we have to rationally look at every everything we do and everything we think about, does he come out in favour of one, one or the other or does he say, look, no, we're more because, preordained to do... No, the difficulty is you, you can't function without both and, and both um, almost act independently of each other. Like system two is about... Uh, attention, focus. You say, okay, that must be better because you spend more time on it. Remember when we did um, the Invisible Gorilla? I remember we had the guys, they're the, the looking at the video uh, of people, you know, f- I want you to focus on these people counting the ball. And then on the screen, a gorilla would actually walk across. And most of the people who did this test, so it doesn't matter who they were, they'd be so focused on just counting the number of times the ball was passed, they wouldn't see a gorilla pass right in front of their eyes. So in actual fact, more focus and more attention means that you cut off some of your intuitive behaviour, which is not good either. When you look at books like Black Swan and Nudge, they're all about, I suppose, public policy responses to things like, you know, quitting smoking or public health or, you know, saving for your pension. Are there any practical examples in this book? Yeah, look, there's tons of examples. The fact each chapter is stuffed with experiments. Uh, it's stacked up with appendices. I mean, this is a delight. Anyone who likes Sherlock Holmes is going to love this. It asks brilliant questions like, is adultery more common among politicians or among doctors and lawyers? I won't give you the answer on that. Uh, how many murders occur in the state of Michigan in one year? Uh, and then it gives you brief descriptions of people. Then at the, at the end of it, it would say, uh, is that person uh, a librarian or are they a farmer? So if you love that type of stuff, the way how your brain works, why you go for one particular answer over another, uh, and what it does is, as I said, it actually just helps you question yourself further. Is it a general read or one for just uh, people with an interest in psychology? Well, look, I think if you're interested in people, uh, and I think most of us are because we're all people watchers, you'd have to love it. Now, again, you you said it at the start of the show. Look, if you like Nudge, Black Swan, uh, Blink, Tipping Point, um, you want to understand group think, you want to understand the wisdom of crowds, I think it's it's fascinating read. Like all uh, economists as well, there's loads of people who differ what this guy says, but it's certainly, it's very, very interesting. Okay, Alan Jordan, sales director of BookBuzz, thank you very much for coming in this morning. That book, Think Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman. We'll stick the title on our website later on. Cheers, Alan. Now, I want to move on this morning.